It is 8.14. It is March. It's still March 3rd. Uh, city Council is here with exception of uh, Council Member Milliman. And uh, this is a study session. Uh, okay. And the, the, we have one subject on this item, and that's working with uh, Englewood on a question they have for us. They, have, they presented this question to us back in January, January 14th, I believe it was. Uh, and then at, at that time, City Council did not ag agree to go forward with the agreement they were proposing to us. I have since, uh, at, at the request of Mayor of Inglewood, met with her, and uh, as well as uh, Peter's the director of the plant. Uh, and they asked us to reconsider, and they said they would come in and, and present to us uh, in, in council. So we uh, are here to listen to them one more time. So, introduction, Sean Lewis, City Manager of Inglewood, on the left, and of course Peter Van Rye is the Director of our Wastewater Treatment Plant. So, Sean, I'm going to turn it over to you. Very good. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to come and uh, meet with you in person. Um, I want to just start by thanking you for the continued partnership. You know, I think that the wastewater treatment plant is really an example, not only statewide, but nationwide in terms of how communities can partner together, partner with other communities as well, to really realize efficiencies and cost savings, um, you know, when we work together. And so I just want to appreciate um, the, the partnership that we have. Um, also, want to thank you for the partnership that we continue to to have and work on with the Tri-Cities Homelessness Group and thank um, Councilmember Carol Fay who does a great job representing you all as well as um, Sam uh, and Randy and Mark and Reed and so everybody um, gets involved but thank you for that partnership too. We think we're moving in the right direction. Um, we want to talk tonight about the proposal um, that hopefully you have um, had a chance to look at the council memo, pretty detailed in that and kind of what we're looking at. But just to kind of give you an overview of what we're trying to do that we really think has benefits for both communities. Um, certainly, you know, the benefits are probably greater for Inglewood, but we hope to explain tonight how we think that this really benefits Littleton as well. So the way this would work is that we would be... Um, expanding the position, the role that um, Director Peter Van Rye, uh, Director of South Platte Water Resources Partners, um, plays to also include utilities, the Inglewood Utilities Department. But I want to just give some a little bit of background on the fact that we have really significantly reduced the total magnitude of the utilities department. So in anticipation of this, but also just because it made sense, we have broken that department up and, and moved utility billing into our finance department. We've moved the stormwater division, which was a substantial part of the work of that department, into public works. And so Inglewood has a utilities department, a public works department, and of course the plant. And so we have really just shrunk that utilities department down to water, water and wastewater, uh, excuse me, water treatment, and then wastewater and water collection distribution. So it's a much kind of smaller, uh, more manageable department, we think now. Um, we also um, just want to emphasize that this is really, um, that there are no other resources that would be shared between Inglewood and Littleton except for Peter. So Peter is the only kind of resource that would then be split where he would be serving this dual role between City of Inglewood's utilities, this new small department, but continuing to manage <coughs> independently the wastewater treatment plan. Um, I do want to just mention one other thing that Peter, and, and I have not probably done as well as I could have been explained to my council, the, the really substantial uh, changes that Peter has made to the plant. He's uh, created four new deputy director positions at the plant. That has really given a greater level of oversight, management, and leadership to the different departments and divisions within the organiza his organization that has really allowed him to think much more strategically, long range, and um, certainly he has done that and we are seeing the benefits of that at the wet water treatment plant excuse me, the wastewater treatment plant, but it's also, frankly, kind of freed him up, I think, to have capacity to do some other things. Um, we'll talk about in a moment that he really is someone we want to retain in the organization. So when he and our director of public works came to me and said, we really think this is the direction we should go in terms of trying to address Littleton's concerns about underfunding capital at the wastewater treatment plant, we think that this is the individual to help Inglewood do that, to really get us where we need to be. 
So in terms of the benefits to Littleton, you may remember back in December uh, of 2018, if you were on council, that you all sent us a, an appropriately strongly worded letter that explained to us um, that we were, in fact, underfunding capital at the plant. And at that time, I think in 2017, council had declined to raise rates that were highly needed um, to really fund that. We have been moving in the right direction on that, but we're in the process of a, of a uh, wastewater and water master plan that's really giving us a picture of how bad the situation is and how we really have underfunded that capital, not only at the water treatment, wastewater treatment plant, but also in our own system. And so we really feel like that this new structure of having the right person in place that has that capital experience, that has that rate and fee kind of structure and bonding experience in Peter is really the right person to get us in, in a position to better fund the wastewater treatment plant by better managing Inglewood utilities. Um, we also want to, so we think that those first two items are real benefits to, um, to Littleton, but we also um, want to just point out that even though it's not substantial, um, this is, does provide about a $45,000 or 135000 over three year savings to um, Littleton. And by the way, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. <coughs> the benefits to Inglewood, in some ways, are benefits, I believe, to Littleton, in that Director Van Rye really can establish that long-term financial sustainability for the Inglewood Sewer Fund, which has historically been underfunded and really kind of lacked vision and foresight over the last number of years. It also, um, as soon as you had your last discussion on this in January, I, the next day, posted the position because we thought, okay, we're moving on um, and we're going to you know, hire a new utilities director. I can tell you that we got a little over a dozen candidates for that position. I would not call any of them qualified. We had it at the same rate or maybe a little bit higher than our previous utilities director was at. We don't think it was a salary problem. The market is very, very tight um, for this kind of talent right now. And so um, not feeling comfortable moving forward with any of those candidates really, I think, is what prompted our mayor to reach out to um, your mayor and, and have that conversation. So we appreciate this second opportunity to look at this. Also, of course, as you know, because now that we have this more whittled down utilities department that has water treatment, um, water, wastewater collection distribution, that's the exact same skill set that Peter has that's really benefiting us right now at the treatment plant. And so we think that the, that the you know, it's very analogous in terms of the the positions of education, skill, talent, and experience that we need in Inglewood Utilities are the same, those same qualities that Peter has. And then again, the benefit to uh, financially to Inglewood is about $140,000 per year. So I'm just going to quickly go over these and then turn it over to Peter. Certainly we think that this um, is, is beneficial to both cities in that it creates some consistency in our funding approach, which again, you have had concerns about correctly. We think it provides us with that consistency. It also is a community, you know, a continuation of the really strong community partnership that we've had for years. You may or may not know that this was actually the structure that the wastewater treatment plant operated under for most of the decades um, until several years ago when we split our utilities department out from the director position, I would actually submit to you, in all due respect to my predecessors, that that actually created some of the problems that, are, that, Ingl that Littleton is addressing. That instead of having someone that had a really global look at the sewer rates in Inglewood has created financial problems for our wastewater treatment plan. Why? What's that? Why? I think, I think it created a lack of focus. What we, what we ended up having was just a, a utilities department that was based on maintenance only. So the goal was to keep rates low, to not ever have to increase rates, that then I think has created that lack of capital investment. Whereas if we have someone that sees the big picture of where that the, our, our sewer fund, what it funds, and the capital needs that are at the plant, that they have a direct role in those fees, rates, and master planning at Inglewood Utilities, it simply strengthens the financial state of the plan. It's the way we see that. Did you want to add anything? Well, yeah, I, I think the I think the difference is, um, and and I wasn't here during the old the other structure, but the the old structure was the the plant had a plant manager, and the plant manager reported to the director of utilities for the city of Englewood, and so the director of utilities actually had more more control and oversight over the plan. 
directly that also integrated all the needs of the plant into the, the thinking and the planning for the utility itself. When the two split off, the plant became a, a separate entity. And I think it's my understanding the reason why it was uh, split off and created as a, as a separate director was because um, after years of the same individual as a plant manager, in order to recruit the level of uh, uh, talent that they wanted at that level of position, they elevated it to a, a director level position. This is my understanding based on talking to the previous city manager about it. And so I think what that did is it, it, it separated the two focuses. So now there was, a, there was a new utilities director that wasn't necessarily working in hand in hand with a new, um, with a, the new uh, director of South Littleton Englewood Wastewater Treatment Plant at the time. And I think that caused a less of a um, less of a direct connected focus on the needs of the plan as integrated into the utilities department. That's just my that's my gut sense on it. Um, I can't I don't have like any. It's just my sense on based on talking to previous directors, previous uh, people who managed to try and get a sense for you know how did it how did it get this way? Because part of what we're part of what I'm trying to do is as the plant director, is I'm trying to make sure that, that both cities are, are adequately funding what, what both cities agree is necessary for the plant. And so as I'm trying to understand what happened in the Englewood history to get us to this point where the sewer fund is, is so low from a fund balance perspective, um, that's, that's what I've been able to piece together. Um, so I, I hope that context helps. I have a question. So I don't know if it's Mark or Sean who should explain this, but what is the difference between his utility person and our utility person? Keith is ours, I believe. So well, what, is, what is the difference between the two? We actually have a slide on that, too. Pardon me? We have a, we have a slide. If, if it can wait. It can oh, wait. There we go. We can go right to it. Can I ask one question, Peter? Well, well since you just mentioned it, I'm, I'm not at all clear, uh, I don't think, on the nexus between needing a dual director role and the funding structure or the adequacy of the funding from the Inglewood sewer utility? I think, so, so, all right. So here's where I work for both cities. And, and this is where I have to walk a fine line working for both cities. And every time that I meet with, I don't advocate one city over the other city because I work for both cities. What I think that this role does and the reason why um, the reason why I'm interested in doing it and where I think there can be a benefit to both cities is in the role, I can manage the, the development of the rates and fees and the, and the revenue streams for the city of Englewood with a main focus, one of the main primary focuses being the plant itself because that's what I'm director of right now. So I have an inherent, um, an inherent responsibility to the plant because that's where I am right now. And so if I move into this role where I have, a, have the ability to um, to help shape the rates and fees on behalf of Englewood. One of the main priorities that I'll be focused on is the plant because half of my job is running the plant. And so there's a, to me, there's a corollary benefit to Littleton that there's an assurance that the plant is actually being seen as, a, as something that's in the forefront of that rate and fee discussion as opposed to potentially a, a secondary, um, as, a, as a secondary uh, effect. Maybe let me ask the question in the opposite way. Why couldn't a separate director for Ingle, Inglewood Sewer Utility um, s similarly manage the rate structure for that they utility? They could. Uh, I, yes, absolutely they could. And I, But I don't think they would ever necessarily have the same level of focus that someone all, that who also has responsibility for the plant would have on really getting us to the point where we're adequately funding the capital. They could do it. I could direct them. I could, you know, really put the screws to them, if you will, to make sure that they're focusing, focusing on that. But no one is going to have the plant's in interest at heart better than the person who's also managing the plant, if that makes sense. Further, because of the, frankly, I think the difficulty of filling this position so far, I don't think we have a candidate in our pool of 16 or so that can actually do this, certainly who can't do it as well as Peter, who has been doing this work, has done it in other communities, and I think is will successfully do it in Inglewood. I'm still struggling. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
and maybe it's coming up. Um, what protects Littleton? Great question. So that's actually a pretty good segue into my last bullet point, and I'll turn it over to Peter to talk about those conflicts, because this was a major concern of his too. And so we really feel like we've gotten to a place where um, between your city attorney, our city attorney, and the plant attorney, that we're in a good spot. So what we believe is that the draft MOU that you all have actually reduces the conflicts of interest that currently exist that were never really properly addressed in the 1982 agreement. And unless we want to reopen that agreement, the MOU is actually providing greater protections um, for both cities. So. Yeah, I think what it does is, it, it, and, and these you have in the, in the slides just some of the more pertinent language that is specifically, has been specifically developed between the two city attorneys and the plant attorney to ensure that all aspects of potential conflict of interest are clearly articulated and in, in, in their response to that conflict of interest um, whether it be in, in the first instance a small uh, or what is it a day-to-day -day, day -day most routine actual uh, conflicts of interest can be handled at my discretion with with the supervisory committee as my direction that directs me um, so the supervisory committee is made up of the two deputy uh, the two city managers and the two public works directors I take my direction from that committee as it relates to plan plant business. And so if there is something that seems to be a, a conflict of interest, I I can bring it to the supervisory committee if it becomes an if it becomes something that's an issue. I think for more major conflict of interest, which we I mean there are some potentials, but I don't know that there's I don't know that there's a number of significant ones that wouldn't actually come before a supervisory committee anyways, routinely. Um, but what this does is it 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 clearly states that if we run across this kind of potential for conflict of interest between the two roles, that I bring it to the, the supervisory committee and the supervisory committee directs me. If the two cities don't agree, then the, the 82 agreement has a provision in it where uh, a, fifth, a, a fifth party basically is an uh, independent fifth party is brought in to be the tie-breaking vote. Um, and so I think what where the 82 agreement talks about the ability to bring in a, if in, a, in the case of a disagreement, the ability to bring in a, that fifth party independent um, vote, what, the, what this MOU does is it much more clearly um, delineates that response in writing as part of the agreement between the two cities. Yeah, Pam, did you have a question first? I don't know what I'm missing here, but there's somehow something's not working between the utilities and your position. That that's why you're shrinking the department. But well, I don't so that's that's his department. Okay, I don't understand what this conflict of interest. I understand rates. I think that I think the conflict of interest. In so, the simplest terms. So, so here's the, where the conflict of interest is. So if I'm in it, so if, if this goes through and I get into a dual role. And I have to assess what's more important. Is it the rates associated with something to do with the sewer fund specific to the city of Englewood? Or is it the funding level necessary for the plant? And, and do I make a judgment that, that gives more um, preferential treatment to one city over the other as a result? That's the issue. Is it either or? Well, I think, that that's, the, I think that's what it's trying to address is, that, is to, to make sure that that doesn't get out of balance for both cities. So the, the plant is still seen as a 50-50 as a jointly run own joint venture. Yeah, Karina, I know you have a question. Um, so I'm gonna comment to that yeah. statement for a second, and then I'm gonna ask my, or I'm gonna make a statement because I don't have a question. So if a situation like that be, you know, comes to fruition, it seems like it would be so obvious that the supervisory committee would jump in right away. Like if there's discussions like that, that may begin to unfold, like it'd be, um, it'd be kind of, we see it, it's not as transparent. Thank you, Stuart. So you've had experience in this type of scenario. What is your point of view? Well, you know, I think, uh, 
when you look at the operation and the capital for the wastewater treatment plant, in the end, what you're looking at is a discharge permit issued by the state. And so there are certain standards you have to meet by a certain point in time. So you have to back up and make sure that you have the capital in place to meet that standard. That's the conversation we've been having. So from my perspective and that of Keith Reister, as we sit in the supervisory committee, that's ultimately what we're looking for. We want to make sure that our investment gets there. Here's, here's the advantage I see with the dual role. So where the capital plays out in the, in the period of time in order to meet the discharge permit is we're open to flexibility. It, there's not a set formula for exactly what can be built when to some extent. And so I think the advantage for the dual role is that person's looking over at the other side of the equation of Inglewood's utility, uh, sewer, sanitary sewer, looking at all their costs and so they can see a rate structure based on moving all these pieces around, pieces of the plant, pieces at the city. And so there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to kind of match it up to meet the optimum. In the end, it comes back to the supervisory committee and answers the same old question. Do we meet the capital? Is it planned? Is it built in time to meet the discharge permit? And that's where, from my perspective, that's what I'm looking at. I couldn't care less what's going on over there as long as they meet their financial obligation for the letter that I sent to you. May I make my, my oh, statement sorry. that I get? So where I stand on this is my concern was more on a capacity. So my decision um, previously was, you know, and I asked you, Pete, like, how do you have all of a sudden find the time to do something like this? So you have shared you know, what the role is a bit more clearly for me. Um, and I understand the incremental capacity just, that just comes with experience and that synergy that exists as opposed to having to connect the pieces and all of that. So from my perspective, I, I'm, I'm in a position that I'm ready to okay. support this. But if we get to Scott, then if you will get back to my, my sure. question. Mike, yes. Yes. Um, I have a couple of things. <clears throat> I guess Reed and Mark, what legal or other mechanisms are currently in place to ensure that Inglewood meets its financial obligations regarding the plan? Well, I guess I'd have to go back to the 1982 agreement that called for both parties to, I would say that we're probably a little bit outside of where we had agreed to, you know, 40 years ago, where both parties had made a commitment to put aside in a separate fund um, those monies uh, necessary to support the capital improvements for the plant. So I think that has been out of whack for a period of time. Um, in terms of the mechanisms uh, to get, you know, our partner in this, Inglewood, to come into compliance, I would, I would really be speculating in terms of whether or not we're willing to, and, and, and on, you actually, I don't think you've seen the letter, but I think Mark's letter that was sent to uh, you know, the city of Inglewood last year basically threatened litigation over the fact that they were failing to comply with uh, what they were required to do in terms of um, providing a funding source and necessary capital improvement funding. Okay. Um, am I fair in saying that if there are smaller scale conflicts of interest, those are up to the directors or the dual directors' sole discretion, and those would not come to the attention of the supervisory committee? Yeah, I would think that the intent of it is that the kind of day-to-day -day small type things, uh, the dual director would be able to mitigate what those were and handle those potential smaller conflicts. Um, is there a lapse of time between when a major conflict could arise and when the supervisory committee could meaningfully act to address it so that the damage could already be done? Um, I would say that that's probably unlikely. Um, I think this, but is it this particular paragraph on the fifth person being added? Yeah. You know, this is an interesting agreement if you hadn't read it from 1982. So it contemplates that the two cities are actually, uh, let's say there is some conflict there. If the two cities disagree, there's only, there's four voting members. So it contemplates adding a fifth independent member to somehow settle the issue. So I think they, there's a purchasing, you know, the, largely it comes around what the supervisory committee is looking at is kind of purchasing contracts, construction. And so there's thresholds for which the director cannot exceed. And so if once they go over that $100,000, once they go over that, it requires supervisory committee in order for it to proceed. So that's typically the kind of conflict 
that I would say could occur, but there's mechanisms, I believe, that, that would manage that so it wouldn't necessarily get out of hand. Okay. Um, oh, what was I going to ask? Um, oh, I'm, I'm missing something. So in, just in terms of Littleton's organizational structure, if this is so advantageous to Inglewood, yeah. why are we after Peter as our new director? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, a segue into my question. I think this, goes, this slide goes to it. And, and, and I think it largely has to do with um, the scope of the utilities department between the two cities. So in Littleton, the water the water is handled by Denver Water. And so that's, that's a huge difference between Englewood and Littleton. And so water supply doesn't fall into the city of Littleton responsibility. The sanitary sewer, which is the collection system, which is just the, the pipes that collect everything that take it to the plant, is really the only component. And that's a, that's a gravity generally of the, of the systems out there. It's pretty, it's not nearly as complex as the water supply system. It's generally just gravity pipes. Um, I don't know, do you have lift stations? Do you know? We have a couple. So lift stations are the most complex thing that you'll end up with a sewer system. Um, Englewood actually doesn't have any lift stations. It's all, it all is gravity. So it's all just pipe that just flows by gravity. And then the, the last piece is a storm sewer, um, which Englewood ha or Littleton has as well, um, which is a under public, under the public works department. And so the sanitary sewer and the, the storm sewer are both under public works under Littleton. Over in Englewood, um, since the water department is, is completely independent, they actually call it the donut hole. Um, Denver Water refers to it as the donut hole. Because if you look at Denver Water's surface area, there's this hole in the middle, and that's the city of Englewood because the city of Englewood chose years ago to build their own system. And so that water system has a, a plant and a distribution system and some pump stations and some tanks. And so there's a, there's a, more, compl there's a more substantial utility system for the water. Like I said, the sewer system is fairly comparable between the two, if anything, I think Englewood's is simpler than Littleton's. And then the storm sewer under the new structure falls into the similar, um, falls into the similar structure of being under public works. And so really what it is, is it, it doesn't make sense necessarily for me to do a dual role because it's, it's covered within public works um, in the city of Littleton. In the city of Englewood, there's a, there's a capacity <coughs> issue relative to the, the utilities department that um, a more discreet other department that I have, an ex that I have experience managing um, is, is why there's that dual role for, is why there's an opportunity for it in, in Englewood. I think it really, comes, it really comes down to the water system. The water system is the major difference. And so where I would come in is to help, because I've, I've worked with water system, supply systems at previous organizations as well, um, that's, where, that's where the expertise can lend itself to supporting both roles. Yeah. Now, Reed, I have a question for Reed. Thank you very much. Sure. Does that take care of your... Uh, yeah, no, let me think about it while I ask Reed my question. It's, How's it's that? It's a yeah, fair answer to the question that I asked. Okay. That's what you mean. I have a... I could respond to that, but go I, ahead. I, I was, well, it might be helpful. Uh, from the get-go, Inglewood has been the manager of the plant. I mean, we've been partners on the plant, but from the get-go, Inglewood has been the manager of the plant. Is that, that, is that correct? That was an that, you. That's great. They're in charge of all the employees for the plant. For the agreement. For the agreement in 1973 and then followed up by the 1982. Right. And so they're all city of Englewood employees. Right. And, I, and, and it's my understanding, too, that uh, the plant manager was also Englewood's utility person. You, historically, it was. Yeah. And, and, well, I mean, I still am. I'm just, I'm a city of Englewood employee. I just am the right. director. And then, I, and I know more recently, the Englewood, it, it, part of my concern is what I sort of expressed back in January was that the, that Inglewood did have some operating issues within the city itself, uh, not just staff, but also folks given direction in the city of Inglewood. I think those things, those issues have all been corrected uh, naturally, kind of, by the voters, basically. Because well, there, there were some people there that were really making it difficult for the then plant manager and managers uh, to get the job done, so that, which we had some turnover there. 
Yeah, and I would say one of the things that was the result, that the 2018 December letter is what really um, brought the plant back to being more directly managed by the supervisory committee. Because the issue was that, I don't, I don't know when this happened, sometime over the last five or ten years, the City of Englewood Council started to in, in, uh, have a approval process that was part of, of approving you know anything over $25,000. So I use the example of when I first got here, I had $52,000 worth of valves that I took to the, the uh, supervisory committee. We got approved. And then I had to take it to the city of Englewood city council, or the city of Englewood city council to get approval from them as well. And so the, the, the concern was, okay, so what if city of Englewood says no, because the plant is represented equally by the two cities as part of the supervisory committee. Englewood has now taken a, a, a more authoritarian authority role over, over the plant and the plant decisions. The letter helped to, helped us to go back and create a different purchasing policy for the plant that ties back to the requirements of the 82 agreement. So that process is no longer there anymore. So I think some of the and concerns- And I have exactly the same purchasing authority now because he can make those purchases for the plant up to 100,000 without ever coming to me or the city of Inglewood. That's under his discretion under the supervisory committee of both cities. And that's, that's how it was until more recently when it was changed. Okay. Yeah, but we changed the purchasing policy. Yeah. But, but your letter Mark has a comment, then Patrick, and then I think Pam. I think just to maybe answer your question, Scott, um, I think in theory, somebody in Peter's role could be the dual manager of the wastewater treatment plant, Inglewood's two utilities, and the city of Littleton sewer utility. In theory, <coughs> it becomes a capacity issue. Plus, also, they have the structure in place so that their water and sewer is already combined into kind of one department. We have taken public works, and our whole organizational structure below that is kind of meshed together with the sewer utility. So it's not, it's not a clean separation between the two. So you say it's a capacity issue. At what point do we go beyond Peter's capacity? Uh, and why do we know that making him dual uh, director and past his capacity? Why wouldn't placing him in a third tri-director role, a quad director role, be past his capacity? I think there's an arbitrariness to the decision here that, uh, yeah, sure, he can handle two roles, but maybe not three, maybe three, maybe not four, maybe four, maybe five. I mean, well, I, I will say that in my experience, I've been in the exact same position as Peter. I did manage multiple utilities in one city plus a co-owned city and county wastewater treatment plant. So what we're contemplating here for Peter, I've been in the exact same role, so I know what it takes. And so I think that's why I've recommended that if the council didn't have any significant issues with the conflict of interest, that it seems reasonable because I've done it. Now, ultimately, it's Sean's responsibility to make sure that, you know, he's filling the, uh, the requirements of the Inglewood side of the utility, and then the supervisory committee has to make sure that he's filling the responsibility for the plant. So I think that's how I would probably answer that question. Well, the capacity question is also untested. Peter's not been a dual director up to this point. Maybe it's overwhelming. I think we're just getting so deep in the weeds about how Inglewood runs their business, um, the city business. Um, I think we have enough checks and balances here to protect the city. I lean on Mark and his expertise and his opinions on this more than anything, I think uh, I'm ready to make a decision on this to move yeah. forward. Let, let's hear from Pam then. If anybody will move Ho hopefully this is a quick question. These changes that they had up here between the 1982 agreement and the one we have now fills in all the holes and we don't have to worry that we'll be caught in some way that we're, it's unintended. So the, I, I will tell you the 1982 agreement is very vague, probably not the most well-written document for something that governs a several hundred million dollar um, co-owned project. So I wouldn't say that it necessarily fills in all the blanks. It certainly adds to something that was never there. That was in regard to kind of the director type, dual director function, I guess in this case, and how that actual process would be managed by the supervisory committee and 
those conflicts. So I wouldn't say it addresses everything within that agreement. Um, this isn't an amendment to that agreement. This is just um, an agreement between both city managers to be able to do that without opening up that agreement and creating potentially more issues. Well, that was my final comment was, <clears throat> is there an opportunity to, uh, to refine that agreement and bring it up to code, bring it up to, not code, but bring it up to standard, I guess. Uh, I know that's probably there's, just a couple hours worth of week work for you. There's always opportunities. We'll put that on the big board of opportunities. Uh, the parking parking line. Line. For parking line. Yeah, that's a big parking lot. Did <laughs> <laughs> um, you have any more questions? Uh, Patrick, are you good? I'm ready. You're ready. Carol, Pam, Scott. Yeah, yeah I just I guess like to sort of share my perspective, which has not changed. Um, I, I, I really thank you both for coming down and sharing with us. Um, that's a tremendous outlay of time. It's late on a Tuesday. I'm sure you'd rather be with family. I appreciate you coming down here. I will say, quite frankly, I didn't hear any new information in tonight's presentation that wasn't also in our January materials. Um, my main concern remains a conflict of interest. This is a marquee asset for Littleton as it is for Inglewood. This is what, the third largest wastewater treatment plant in the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I come at this from an attorney's perspective, which is you do not trifle with conflicts of interest because even though they may be unlikely, if they rear their ugly head, it is catastrophic, right? And we see this uh, seriousness in needing two city attorneys to try to accommodate the potential conflicts of interest. The only reason, to my mind, that a party to a negotiation would flirt with a conflict of interest is if they're getting sufficient consideration in return from the other side to the negotiation. All I see Littleton getting in exchange for this arrangement is a trifling, what did I call it, budget, budget dust, $43,000 a year in saved personnel costs. I do not see that as nearly a compelling enough reason to introduce the possibility of a conflict of interest here. Um, and I, I do not think that the mechanisms in place are sufficient even to address the conflicts of interest. I do think there could be a, a pretty fatal uh, lapse of time between when a major conflict arose and when the supervisory committee was able to address it. I also do not like the lack of transparency in the dual director being able to address these conflicts uh, on his discretion without any oversight from us as the policymakers uh, of Littleton. So that's what I think. All right. Well, Council, I, I, Mark is looking for some direction at this point. And, and it's right. to what, uh, do we agree to this new arrangement or, or status quo? So we'll just go around the table. Karina, your direction. Um, I'm good to go with the good arrangement. Good. Yes. As well as I. Okay. Yes. Okay, Scott is opposed. So my first one. Thank um, you. Kelly's not here to make it a one <laughs> six. <laughs> so I think you have your direction. I have my direction. Congratulations. Mayor, if I you. could just direct you to the last three points that do try to address some of the mayor pro oh, comments. We've got to undo our direction. Much when you're done selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop selling. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you for coming in, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And, and when is our uh, joint meeting? Get the sale. Why? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's way off. So, we, adjourn here? We, oh, we are, we are adjourned tomorrow.